Welcome back to ECE 442-542. If you're really paying attention, you can see that I have slid homework number seven's due date one day to accommodate design day, which is happening in a week. It, your homework seven will be due on a Tuesday, and then I think homework eight, which I didn't put up here, is due uh, two days after that. I think it's due on reading day. That's optional, and I'll try to make that available if it isn't already to you so that you have a week to do that from Wednesday's class. Project in 542 is due on reading day and teacher course evaluations. I haven't looked at that percentage yet or recently. I'm sure it's very, very high, but I want that last two or three percent of you to complete those to give me input into how to improve or what's happening in the class that is acceptable and what is needing improvement. And then our final exam is on Thursday. So if you're used to coming here on Mondays and Wednesdays, the final is a Thursday. So you'll have to learn how to process digital control on a Thursday, not just Mondays and Wednesdays. And that's from one to three on that last day of finals. Today what I want to do is quickly wrap up PID controller design, but I want you to be aware that there are tools within MATLAB that you can use if you're trying to design controllers. RL tool is root locus tool. R locus is a way to sketch a root locus. And R locus find is a way to actually identify in your root locus diagram the gain value and the location that you essentially locate your crosshairs on through MATLAB and click with a left mouse click button and it will find that particular point and the gain to get you to that point. Then we'll talk about generic or general controller design, not just PID. Now we're pulling down the generic zero shaker and the generic pole shaker and sprinkling poles and zeros down on the z-plane if we're confronted with an unstable system or if we're confronted with a non-minimum phase system. A non-minimum phase system is a system that has finite zeros outside the unit circle. A minimum phase system is when you have all the poles and all the zeros inside the unit circle. Non-minimum phase is when you have zeros outside the unit circle. And our last unit, which we only have three periods left, somehow we're going to have to squeeze that last unit in. That will probably be in the last two, no, we have four counting today. We have four periods left, so maybe we'll have three periods spending on unit number eight. Let's get back to where we left off, which was PID controller design. Here's the block diagram, and this is what you probably want to always quickly jot down just so that you are thinking through what's happening, and I want to make sure that it's clear that our root locus is sketched for the product CG, the poles and zeros there, but if you're now trying to simulate the closed loop system, you actually need to put in the feedback path, close the loop, and generate a closed loop transfer function, the T of Z between R of Z and Y of Z. And I think sometimes if you're in a hurry and you're working through MATLAB, you find the root locus of C of Z, G of Z, and then you say step, and it goes crazy. It goes unstable or unbounded, and you're going, well, wait, the root locus says that the poles are here. Well, the root locus is based on the product of C of Z, G of Z, but those branches of the root locus do assume that you've now put in this negative unity output feedback around 
C of Z, G of Z, and those branches then determine your closed loop poles. For a PID controller, we've now added another knob. We now have three adjustable parameters. We started with a P, which is the gain. We stepped up to the PI, which is now a zero location and the gain. And now with a PID controller, we have two zeros that we can adjust. We're fixing two poles immediately, one at the origin and one at Z equal to one, when we say, oh, here we're trying to implement a PID controller. This is the generic structure that we will use in this class. You'll now have the freedom to pick or select beta 1 and beta 2 and adjust the gain K. Once you've picked beta 1 and beta 2, you can now sketch the root locus and the adjustment along the root locus is influenced by the adjustable gain K bar. Let's talk our way through this connection with what we've already done by returning to an example that we've pursued and that is the stabilization of this unstable system G of Z. G of Z is now 1 over Z minus 2. The blue pole is our system pole. The two red X's, those poles are due now to the poles in our PID controller, the pole at the origin and the pole at z equal to 1. And now, sometimes instead of saying, oh, I want my closed loop poles to be here and here, and then trying to figure out where do I locate my zeros, I have two zeros now to put down, sometimes it's actually easier to put the zeros down to try to stabilize, find branches that come simultaneously into the unit circle and then adjust the gain to get you to some triangle location on those branches. And that's what I'm trying to suggest here in this comment. Ooh, that's a long two sentences. But here's the note. It says, it may be easier to stabilize the system by the choice of beta 1 and beta 2 and then adjust your gain to locate the z deltas. So you start with a stable design and then you can actually move beta 1 and or beta 2 if, you don't, if you're not happy with where those root locus branches are moving through your unit circle. And all of this can be done within MATLAB. You can now, with RL tool, you can now locate zeros and you can slide those around and MATLAB will immediately sort of respond and show you what the step response looks like for those choices of moved zeros in your design. Let's go back to where we started. We've already designed a PI controller for this unstable system. The PI controller is this parameter K with a zero factor, Z minus alpha or Z minus beta, and we have a pole at Z minus one. And what's the use of that pole at Z equal to one? What's the benefit of having that integrator piece in the PI controller? Wow, we were really loud before class, karaoke and everything, and now it's just completely silent. What happened? I need to just start turning on some music and then we can say, where's that zero? We located the zero based on two complex poles at point 0.9 plus and minus j.1. And that's where this particular PI controller came from. 
can we use that as a way to start guiding our choice of beta 1 and beta 2? If we now know that this C sub 1 of Z does give us a stable controller, can we now transition that and achieve better performance if we now incorporate a PID controller? So the PI controller gives us closed loop poles at 0.9 plus and minus J.1. And maybe after we simulate that, we find that's not really what we want. So now what do we do? Well, is there a way to see how C sub 2 of Z becomes C sub 1 of Z? Or, did I ask that question here, when does a PID controller equal a PI controller? Can you see how that could happen? If you picked beta 1 equal to 0, now you have a 0 at the origin and a pole at the origin. Those cancel, so we don't have to worry about that. And we're left with a z minus 1 factor in the denominator. We're retaining that integrator piece. And then we could pick beta sub 2 to equal the 0.9833. So with beta 1 equal to 0, we now have a pole, I'm sorry, a zero at the origin, which cancels the pole at the origin in our PID controller. And now we're in a position to maybe start moving away from that value or those values of beta one and beta sub two. And one can use RL tool in MATLAB to adjust those parameters. Now, suppose, let me slide back if I can. Let me go back to this particular diagram and just start hypothetical, a hypothetical discussion. We just said that a PI controller was such that we had a zero very close to that pole and we had another zero. I'm going to make it big just so that I can erase it. But that's the PI controller that we had. And now what we want to do is, oh, can we adjust those in some way to maybe move our root locus around? What happened with our root locus? Here it's going to be in green and not red, but these two came together and that's obviously going to be on the real axis but I'm drawing it a little bit off and then they uh, I, I'm drawing challenged but they went around like this and ended up with poles right there That was our PI controller. Maybe we don't like the closed loop poles that close to the unit circle. So what could we do? Well, we could go into MATLAB and say, oh, you know what? I can move these zeros around fairly easily in RL tool, and how would I maybe try to do that? Now suppose that I modify away from those, zero, that, those two zero locations that I started with.
Suppose now that I said, oh, a, a slight modification is what if I move those two zeros towards each other between zero and one on the real line? Meaning, what if I put a zero now at point one and another zero at point nine? Now what's the root locus look like? So I've just modified slightly. I moved the one zero that was at 0.98 over a little to the left so that hopefully I can move the root locus further into the real, I'm sorry, inside the unit circle so that I can achieve, achieve a faster response. I have more pieces of bread, don't I? I have more real line segments now that are either on or off the root locus, I still have this section. Now what, what other sections do I have? Do I have a section between the rightmost zero and z equal to one? No. But I do have a section here. And so eventually, if I cranked up the gain a lot, I would go to those finite zeros. And I also have a branch that moves off from the origin to minus 1. And the goal is now to hopefully have selected those zeros such that now maybe I can have my triangles further inside the unit circle, why do I want them further inside the unit circle than what they were? What's the benefit of having triangles closer to the origin in the z-plane? Well, if you can't answer now, you better answer on the final. That's going to enhance or speed up your response. Now you have a smaller R, now you're saying as a very general case you say one half to the N versus 0.9 to the N. One half to the N is collapsing much quicker than 0.9 to the N. So now you might say, oh let me see if I could do a design with a 0 at 0.1 and a 0 at 0.9 and see what happens. And that's a slight variation from what we had, which we knew that when we were at the origin in 0.9833, we were stable. And it gave us an okay response, but maybe it wasn't what we really wanted. So now suppose that we do this. Suppose now that we say, okay, let me put a 0 at point 0.1 and a 0 at point 0.9 and obviously I'm stuck with a pole at the origin and a pole at 1. And what happens? Well, I didn't want to connect up MATLAB and have keyboards and I didn't know if my... I didn't want to do that in real time. So I've done it offline. Here's the design process, sort of, but I'm not going to illustrate RL tool. You can go home and play with that tonight. I know you're all going to be wanting to do that. Don't leave just yet. Go ahead, sit down. Sit down. Yeah, people are anxious to go ahead and leave and play with RL tool, but here's, here's the system that we started with, G of Z. is 1 over z minus 2 and we put it in to MATLAB right there with the TF function, with the transfer function. We put in the numerator, that's 1, comma, then we put in the polynomial z minus 2 as 1, comma, minus 2. And we, I went ahead and said I don't care what the sample period is, I'm not worried about that, so I said comma minus 1. So I didn't pre-specify a sample period for this system. Here's the PI controller. 
but notice I didn't put in the gain. I just put in the zero and the pole, and I could play with the gain through MATLAB. My zero factor, here was my PI controller, There's my zero at 0.9833 and my pole at one. And here, just so I have the other design to play with, this is now my PID controller. Again, without a gain specified. And here, instead of multiplying those polynomials myself, I let MATLAB do it with the convolution function. So CONV convolves, that multiplies polynomials the way that you multiply polynomials. If you tried to say multiply two row vectors, it's going to go what? I don't know how to multiply two row vectors, but it will multiply vectors that are representing polynomials with the convolution command. The convolution command now combines the two zero factors. One zero was at point 0.1, the other one was at point 0.9, so this is now z minus 0 0.1, z minus 0 0.9 over, and this denominator was easy enough to put in as a row vector. This is now what are my coefficients? This now says, oh, my leading coefficient is 1, my next coefficient is minus 1, and my last one, the z to the 0 coefficient is 0. My denominator polynomial is 1, minus 1, 0. Again, I'm not putting a sample period in. That's why the comma minus 1 is there. This is now my PID controller. And here's how you could do the root locus and the finding of your gain. First, you want to combine the plant G with the PID controller. I don't know why I did that before the PI, but I did. So now I've combined the plant G with the PID controller, and I represented the plant as G and the PID controller as C2. I just multiply them. That gives me a loop gain, C times G. And if you were checking your work, it now shows you what that loop gain equals, the product of C with G. Then I opened up a new figure window, and I said, oh, let me sketch the root locus for that loop gain, CG product. And somewhere maybe that's provided, which... Here's the root locus for the PID controller. And I think I did an axis equal so that my circles look circular. The unit circle looks like a circle. If you don't say axis equal in MATLAB, you may look at the unit circle and see that it looks elliptical because the X coordinates are not the same scale as the y coordinates but now saying axis equal it makes it look a little bit more like what you would think a unit circle looks like and what i've done is with r loc find i've now tried to position my crosshairs over a point and then i left mouse clicked and that's what those plus signs give me the plus signs say oh this is where you want your gain and how many plus signs are there on the diagram? Three, because I have three branches of the root locus. And each of those branches are a different color. That's how MATLAB keeps track of those. One branch is red, one branch is blue, and one branch is green. Kind of our favorite colors in this class. And now you could say, okay, what happens? Well, let me go back to, this is why it's a little bit challenging to do this offline, but where was I? Right here. 
So now I did the R locus find, and I clicked, left mouse clicked, and located my point at 0.7 plus and minus J.2. That's where those plus signs. Question. So it de the question was, is R locus, which R locus function sketches a root locus, if you wanted it to be the root locus of your plant for just a constant gain controlled system, you would just put in the argument of R locus your plant, G, for example. But here, I knew that I already had a zero and a pole for my, well, actually, this was the PID, so I had two zeros and two poles already located, and I wanted to combine those with my plant G, and I wanted to sketch the root locus of their product. So that's why I said R locus, or I applied that R locus function to the loop gain. And I'm calling it L gain 2 because it was controller 2. But that could be anything. You could have just said L, and that would, as long as L was equal to G times C2, then you just say R, loc R locus L, and it will sketch the root locus of the product of C with G. But no, you can apply root locus to any pole zero pattern you want, but you just need to know or give it the correct combination of poles and zeros. Was that your question? But the next command, R loc find, now if you bring back the window that your root locus is in and drag your mouse around, you'll have crosshairs on your root locus diagram and you now move the mouse around to where you can put those crosshairs at a desired location on the root locus that you think you're interested in and click the mouse button on the, the left mouse button. And doing that, I had a point of, or a location of 0.7 plus point two i or j point two and the gain to get me to that was one point nine three. That's the A and S. That's the answer. That's the gain value. What I then did is I said, well let me use that gain in a new controller which I'm calling C three and now I'm saying 1.93 times C2. Remember C2, I didn't have a gain specified. And now I want to put a particular gain value. I now have a different loop gain for that new controller. I have loop, loop gain 3, that's C3 times G. And now I want to sketch or look at the closed loop behavior. So I now put L gain 3 into a closed loop unity output feedback. Unity is the 1 in the second argument of feedback. This is now my closed loop system for a PID controlled plant that was unstable, but now I have the two zeros at 0.1 and 0.9. And there's my closed loop transfer function, and I've probably said, well, where are the poles of that? And it will now factor that cubic for me. And it's close to where I clicked, obviously, because I put in that particular value of gain, 1.93. So now I'm at 0.6992 plus and minus J.2. And the third pole, which is on that branch of the root locus from the origin off to minus infinity, Luckily, it's not beyond minus 1. If it was, I'd have to go back and start over because I wouldn't want a closed loop pole outside the unit circle. I would say, okay, that particular click that I just did didn't give me a valid closed loop system in terms of everything being stable. What happened with that? Well, that then resulted in this step response. And I right clicked on that figure window and asked for characteristics and I said what's the peak response and it told me that I had an overshoot of 125 percent at 
three sample periods and I settled in 16 sample periods. And before you say, wow, that's really lousy, let's go back and look at what happened with the PI controller. So in fact, I probably did this in the opposite order when I first went through this. I first looked at the PI controller and said, wow, that's kind of bad. Can I make it better with a PID controller? So let's see what happens with the PI controller. Here's the PI controller starting right here. The loop gain for the first controller, L gain 1, is now C1 times G. And there's the appropriate combination of C and G. I opened up a new figure window and said, oh, what's the root locus for that with the axis equal? Then this is what I get for the PI controlled system. And obviously I did the R locus find. I clicked on, tried to get it at 0.9 plus and minus J.1, but that's not easy. But if you do RL tool, root locus tool, you can actually drag those points around. You don't have to just rely on always trying to guess. You can drag with the mouse and move it exactly where you want it and say, okay, there's where I want it, and it will lock in to that particular point. So that's why RL tool might be useful. Here I just wanted, I knew what I wanted, so I just did the R locus find. How many plus signs do I have there? That's a very challenging question, isn't it? Oh, what is it? Oh, everybody left. They went home to do the RL tool, so I don't have anyone left in the classroom. I'm just talking to an empty space, but I now see a peace sign somewhere from a corner. So there are two plus signs, which, why is there two here and there were three with the PID controller, controlled system? So we had more branches, didn't we? Because we introduced more poles with our PID controller than we had with a PI controller. So that's consistent. We should expect those. And those are our two dominant poles in the PI controller. Then I did the similar thing. I said, okay, let me R locus find that. And I picked C with the crosshairs. I didn't get too far away from 0.9 plus and minus J.1. I got it 0.898 and J.085 with a gain of 1 1.2, 183. So I went ahead and fixed that gain value with L gain 1B. You can do something more creative with your functions or your variables. And then I closed the loop with feedback and did a step response with the PI controlled system. And in doing that, I ended up with this. This was my PI controlled system and I want you to try to compare that with the PID controlled system. What was my settling time with the PID controlled system? 16. Here, the PI, it's much slower, isn't it? It's 50, roughly. And what's my overshoot? 356%. That's a batting average almost, isn't it? I bat 356. Well, my PID controller had a better performance, didn't it? Didn't have nearly as much overshoot, and it settled much faster, almost a third in terms of settling time, and much less overshoot. So here is what happened with the PID controlled system. And that's the trade-offs that you have to be thinking about. You could say, oh, I tried a PI. And what was good about the PI controller? 
Where did we settle? Well, we put in a step, a unit step, and we went to one. So we put in one, we went to one. So we had zero steady state air, but it maybe didn't perform the best getting there. Our PID controller maintained that same accuracy. We still went to one. Now we didn't overshoot as much, and we settled more quickly. And that's what we wanted to do. And how did that happen? Now our triangles, or in this case, MATLAB uses plus signs. Our plus signs are closer to the origin. They have a smaller distance away from the origin, which makes them faster. And they have better zeta values relative to overshoot properties than what we had with the 0.9 plus and minus J.1. Questions on MATLAB and how you might use that, or this notion of PI transitioning to PID. So I'm going to say you can see the MATLAB material at the end of the notes. I'm going to append that material at the end of what we are doing now. And now what I want to do is go through a more generic or general control design. And it's based on playing with transfer functions. The transfer function of our plant in combination with our transfer function of the controller. But it's guided by our insight that we have, hopefully, a little bit in this root locus behavior or root locus analysis. So the first one I want to have us work with is this plant G sub 2. We have a 0 at 1, a pole at 1 half, and a pole at 2. And obviously my, one of my goals is to stabilize G sub 2 of Z because I think you can convince yourself that G sub 2 of Z is open loop unstable. Why? Why is that the case? You have a pole outside the unit circle. You have a pole at Z equal to 2. So it's clear that we hopefully can stabilize this system. Now, here's our Z plane. And we can start drawing. We had a pole at 2. We had a pole at 1 half. And we had a 0 at 1. And suppose we let our controller C of Z equal K. What's going to happen? If we say, oh, let's just sort of grow with this. Let's look at what happens if we use a proportional controller in a unity output feedback configuration. What's going to happen in this system with a pure gain controller? And what am I asking? So now if I say, let C sub Z of Z equal to K and show me the results. I feel like a game show host, but we actually have a former student on Jeopardy on Wednesday night. No way! Yes way! So I just learned that. So, and now I'm really going to have an attendance problem on Wednesday. Yeah, everybody's going to go watch Jeopardy because when, it probably comes on at about this time, doesn't it? I don't know when Jeopardy, but it's usually this, I haven't been home Never mind. Anyway, G sub 2 of Z, we're trying to stabilize with a C of Z. So set whatever recording mechanism or you want and for Wednesday night and see if he makes us proud. Apparently he can't tell us what happened. It, it's a, yeah, well, no spoilers. So we'll just have to figure out how well he performs. It is a male, and I know his name, but it's 
challenging to pronounce, so I'm not going to try to say it. <clears throat> All right. So, can, what's going to happen with C of Z equaling K? Where was I? Wow. That was a question. I should have given you the answer. Is that what you were expecting after I started talking about Jeopardy? I should have said, closed loop control for 200. And then I would say, there's your root locus. And you go, what is the pure gain controller look like? I don't know. I don't play Jeopardy. But what does it look like? What's the root locus for this C of Z equaling K? Can you sketch it? And now I hope you're all sort of doing this either on your paper or in your head. You know where the branches are. Which real axis segments belong to the root locus? Between 2 and infinity? Between 1 and 2? between 1 and 1 half, 1 half and minus infinity. See how you're just able to quickly answer all these questions? Now, can we stabilize the system with a pure gain controller? Is this what we have? Are we moving anywhere else with a pure gain controller? Is your system, is your closed loop system stable? What, what does the root locus give us? What does it tell us is happening? Part of your, one of your branches is always outside the unit circle. And that's not a good thing, is it, if we're trying to stabilize this system. So this now, for a, with a pure gain controller, we have an unstable closed loop system, always. So this now is an unstable closed loop system. So that's not going to do us meet our challenge or our objective. Our objective was to stabilize g sub 2 of z with a controller c of z. And we said, OK, let's try a pure gain. And th that's not enough, is it? So we need more flexibility. That was with one parameter. Now what do we do? So now we just go the logical route and we say what about a PI controller? Now you're at the restaurant, you're just asking for more and more napkins, you just keep going through napkins. That's okay, right? Let me do a second design. So now you have your second attempt and we had a pole here we had a zero here and a pole there. And now we're doing a, wait a minute, do we want a PI controller? What's a PI controller do for us? That puts a pole at one and that's gonna be a closed loop pole fixed. No, we don't wanna do that, do we? So now we want to start asking, is there some way that we could maybe select a C sub 1 of Z to, what's our objective? We're trying to stabilize this silly plant that has two poles and a zero. And it's not the nice two poles and a zero in a restaurant, is it? Because the zero is located between the two real poles. <clears throat> so somehow we're going to have to get rid of that branch that seems to be stuck between one and two 
and get them inside the unit circle. How can we do that? What's one way? There are 80 different, well, there's an infinite number of possibilities. But what's one possibility that comes to mind that you might want to do? Can't, okay, so here. Can we create two poles and a zero that we want? When can we cancel poles and or zeros? When is it okay to cancel poles and zeros? When they're inside the unit circle. Do we have any poles and zeros inside the unit circle? Yeah, we have a pole at one half. Maybe we could cancel that and that might simplify things. And that would use a zero. Hmm. So if we cancel the pole at one half, that means this first part of our controller would say, oh, let's put a zero at one half. And now I'm gonna try to put my controller in red. So now I've canceled that. But I can't have a numerator without a denominator factor, can I? This would give me a non-causal controller. I need to balance that zero factor with at least one pole factor. And what's going to happen now? And if I, even in this case, if I could live with a pure numerator factor for my controller, would this be what I want? Can I stabilize my system with this? No, I'm still stuck between 1 and 2, am I not? But I sort of hinted at, can we get two poles and a zero like we want? Which is, we want two poles to the right of a zero. Oh, really? So now if we put a pole there, now does it look a little bit better? What did I just do? I said, let's put a, let's balance that zero factor with a pole factor, and I really need to have a gain k in there, but now what's my root locus for this pole zero pattern look like? Remember my g of z, my g of z was z minus one, z minus one half, z minus two. What's my root locus look like now for this choice of controller C sub 1 of Z? Yep, it's our traditional. And now, where do, do, where do I break away? Can you calculate that pretty quickly? If my pole of the controller is at 1 and a half, now I know my geometric mean is 1 half times 2. Uh, right? Or is that what I want? No, it's one half times one. Wake me up, right? The zero is my radius. So I now have a distance of one to one and a half, that's a half. A distance of one to two, that's one. So I have the square root of one half is my radius. Is that right? 1 over the square root of 2, or square root of 2 over 2, 0 0.707. So I'm 0 0.707 away from 1 is where I'm breaking away. Wish I could draw that, but anyway, you're doing this, and now I'm on a circle, and that should have been at 0 0.3, and that guy goes there, and this guy goes here, and hopefully you can see that I'm now having simultaneously met my desired result, which is to have branches simultaneously inside the unit circle. And when am I going to be stable? Boy, I didn't draw a very good picture. You can make yours a little bit better. At k equals zero, am I stable for this choice? K 
Can you draw a geometric shape on there? What if I say place a square down on that root locus where I have to crank my gain up to at least that square to become at the beginning stable, the beginning value of k to be stable? Do you see where that needs to be? I need to get to that point in my gain adjustment. I need to crank up my gain k to get me to that square and then can I continue to crank up my gain until infinity? No, I I'm going to have one pole go off to z equal to 1, which is okay. It's stuck inside the unit circle. The other one's going to zip out the left side on the real line at minus 1. So the biggest value of gain k is that star. And how do I find square and star's gain values? Well, this, you told me what this was, right? This r was my geometric mean. That was the square root of 1 half and 1. Square root of 2 over 2 is r. What's this distance to the box? Where's the box? On the unit circle, so that's one. Where's my center of the circle? <gasps> it's on the unit circle. It has, I have an isosceles triangle, right? And what's this length? Well, that's just R. I have three sides of a triangle. I can use the law of cosines if I want to try to find the angle that that box makes with the real axis. And I can now find my box location in that way. How do I use that? If I now know what Z box is, how do I use that? How do I find K? What condition? The magnitude condition, and that comes from the characteristic polynomial. So now I have 1 plus k times cg. and that equals zero. I can solve that for k, and I now have k box is the magnitude of z minus three halves, the magnitude of z minus two over the magnitude of z minus one, and I now have pre-calculated what box is. That's 0.75 plus j0.661. And if I just told you the real part, if you eyeballed that and said, well, that looks like 3 quarters, you know that a squared plus b squared is 1, so you could have solved for that b part or the imaginary part of z box. And if you plug that z value in for z, you'll find that k box is equal to 2. And how do I find k max or k star? k star is exactly the same formula. That hasn't changed except now I'm evaluating that at minus 1. At z equal to minus 1. And doing that, I end up with 3 and 3, 3 and 3 quarters, 3.75. And that's now my range on K to stabilize this system with what kind of a controller did I just create? What? What's that controller? Where's the pole of that controller? 
three halves. Where's that pole? Outside, is that okay? I have a pole of my controller that's unstable. Hmm. Am I okay? Now this is kind of like two wrongs make a right. Your plant was wrong because it started out unstable, wasn't it? Your controller is wrong because it's unstable, but combined, <laughs> they work well together, don't they? They give us two poles and a zero. So yes, this is fine. We actually had to put a pole outside the unit circle in order to drag those branches inside the unit circle to give us what we needed. And we drag them by adjusting the gain K. And now we adjust the gain K such that we can have K less than 3.75 and bigger than 2. And that's our gain on that controller to stabilize the system. In C sub 1, were we calling it C sub 1? K Z minus 1 half over and you probably don't want to be living on either limit. You want to be bigger than 2 and less than 3.75. You want those poles to be what? Maybe real and equal or maybe a little bit well I, I'm running out of shapes but you might want to have them right here. be in the cloud. Questions on that? Could we come up with a different controller and stabilize that system? Now that we've stabilized it one way, can you think of other ways to do it? Now that you've seen one, you can start playing with all sorts of controllers. You could say, oh, well, let's cancel that, and why don't I put that one there? Now where do they break away? And what's my radius? I have two poles and a zero, Still, what segments of the root of the real axis belong to the root locus? Between two and infinity? Between one and two? I see a yes and I hear a no. Between one and two, do I have is that real axis segment on the root locus? No, because I have an even number of poles and zeros to my right. The only real line segment that belongs to the root locus is between 1 and minus infinity. And this now has... Oh, I'm... It's supposed to be a zero. I'm sorry, it's supposed to be a circle, but it had a radius of 1. So it should come in at the origin, and then one zips off to z equal to 1, the other one zips off to minus infinity. And you could now decide where you wanted to locate those closed-loop poles relative to the unit circle. So in this case, I've designed another controller that is okay, it stabilizes the original unstable system. Yes? So now the question was, what happens when you canceled that 
pole or zero. In this case, it was our pole that we canceled inside the unit circle. We're assuming now that we, pure, we completely canceled it. In reality, if for robustness purposes, maybe we didn't and we could examine what happens. But in this case, if it's exactly canceled, it's like we've put on our virtual reality goggles and it's no longer there. You could erase that pole zero cancellation and sketch your root locus based on that combination not even existing. But in reality, you might want to check and say, well, the plant really didn't have a pole at one half. It might have a pole at 0.6 or at 0.4 and sketch the root locus associated with those changes to your true plant and see if you're happy with the behavior of those. So now you're sort of doing a robustness analysis around your plant changing from what you thought it was to begin with. I don't know about you, but I'm having a lot of fun. Let's look at another example. There, well, you could play all sorts of C4, C5 for that one plant. Do you see how you could have a hundred different controllers? Might do different things, but you can now shape the root locus a little bit differently with each design. Suppose now we look at a different example. Suppose we now say g sub 3 of z is equal to z minus 2, z, z minus 1. And I think you can sort of anticipate what my designs are doing. I have a 0 at 2 a pole at one and a pole at the origin. And now if I said, well, what's possible with a pure gain controller? What happens if I now use a C of Z equaling K? You can tell me, right? You can draw the root locus. You now know that with a constant gain, this pole is still stuck between one and two. It just goes the other direction. And this pole starts out okay, but since the other pole never is okay, this system with a pure gain controller is never going to be stabilized. So with a constant controller we have an unstable closed loop system again so now let's do another design but I hope that you can see that you can go through pieces of paper or your computer screen or a napkin it doesn't matter. You can just throw them away if they don't work, but you can sort of quickly start sketching some possibilities. In this case, what did we have? We had a zero at two, a pole at one, and a pole at zero. And what do we need to do with our controller to try to stabilize G sub 3. What's our objective? We want to somehow get some branches, all of our branches, simultaneously inside the unit circle. And right now we're stuck between 1 and 2 with a branch with just a pure gain controller. So now, what did we do before? Well, before, we had a pole outside the unit circle, and we put a pole out there, and those two kind of came together, or here they started together and separated and came around. What happens here? Whoops. 
Well, if we put a pole there, does that improve things? So here I'm just playing with napkins, right? I'm just hypothetically thinking, thinking out loud. What if I put a pole there? Is that going to help? No. What if I, well, maybe I didn't put it far enough away. What if I put it over here? Is that good? No. <sighs> well, napkins, uh, throw that one away. Now what? Okay, poles didn't seem to work. What about zeros? What if I put a zero there? Well, you know I can't just put a zero down. I have to put a pole underneath it, don't I? So now what do I do? Don't think too hard, just put a pole down. But you probably want to put it down inside the unit circle. You found it didn't work to put it outside. So now let's chop up our bread and see if we're maybe going to be okay. Which segments of the real line belong to the root locus? Let's just say I put that zero down at three halves. So now what have I done? I've created, so I'm thinking I'm getting closer. So now I'm even going so far as to writing down a C of Z. Before I just put a couple poles down and threw them away because it wasn't working. Now I say, okay, I have a zero. Let's just put it there, halfway between the pole and the zero. And if I'm getting better, then I can start adjusting that around if I like what I'm starting to see. And where did I put my pole? Let's just say that I put that there. Here's my tentative controller. What segments of the real line belong to the root locus? How many segments do I have? I don't even know if I can count that high. But I have six, don't I? Quite a few. Is my root locus between two and infinity? No. It's between one and a half and two, is it not? One branch? Or how many branches are there on that line segment? How many root locus branches are between three halves and two? Hmm, this might be a good question for the final. How many branches do I have between one and a half and two? And what's happening if a, that, what's happening on that branch? What's going to happen? Think back to the root locus sketching rules. Is there any rule that pertains to that branch between one and a half and two? Do I have a breakaway? No, I have a re-entry, don't I? So two branches, two, 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 two branches are going to re-enter and go towards the zeros, aren't they? So I have two branches of my root locus on that one real line segment. So I have two, two, count them, two branches. And they're ending, uh, okay, enough. So between one and one and a half, do I have a root locus segment? No. Between one and a half and one. And how many branches of the root locus live there? Two, again. And now we have a breakaway. Between zero and one half. Is that on the root locus? No, but I do have that on the root locus. So what's, what do I have? I have a breakaway between one half and one and re-entry between one and a half and two. So it's not going to necessarily be a circle, but it'll be something 
symmetrical between the upper half and the lower half of the z-plane. I'm just going to sketch something. And now I'm going this way. That one goes there. This one goes there. These two go towards each other. They get to some point, the relative maximum between one half and one, and then they break away and they go over to the zeros re-entry point, and what am I trying to do? Do I have, have, have I accomplished my goal? Am I able to stabilize this? Did this system, if it wasn't for that zero, I could have had a stable system, couldn't I? But that zero was making it more challenging. So this was open loop, marginally stable. If I close the loop with constant output feedback, I'm definitely unstable. Now, is there any way that I can stabilize this system with this controller? What values of K are going to make this acceptable in terms of stability? So you just, I think, said that this can be used to stabilize the system. How am I going to determine my range of gains for stability? You could for this combination, how many poles and zeros did I put down? I just put down one zero and one pole. And those were my choice. I could move those around if I wanted to. If I'm not happy with what I'm getting right now, but it's going to be similar. I definitely wouldn't want to put that pole at one, would I? If I put that pole at one, I'd have to throw that napkin away, wouldn't I? because then they would break away from the one and immediately go out, they would be living outside the unit circle always, and then they would go towards the two zeros, re-enter there. So I have to have that controller pole somewhere other than at z equal to one. But now how do I adjust. I crank up the gain at k equals zero and just a little bit, an epsilon beyond k equals zero. Am I okay? Closed loop stability wise? Yes, now those two poles, the pole at z equal to one is now starting to move inside the unit circle. And what am I hoping to have happen? Suppose now I crank up the gain k and these two are right there. That, those are supposed to be triangles. Am I okay stability-wise? It depends. What's it depend on? What do we have to check? If now you clicked, you were doing this in MATLAB and you clicked your crosshairs at one of those triangles and lo and behold a third triangle pops up there. Oh! What happened? That's not good, is it? Now you've cranked up the gain too much. You've now gone unstable. It probably won't be quite that dramatic. What you're hoping for is that triangle to be about right there when you crank it up. And then at the, let's say at the breakaway point, let's say now that's a box, and let's say that that gets you there. Then you're still okay at the breakaway. Let's say that in fact, well you can't see my box anyway, suppose the box <laughs> is still there and I my box is still on the real line less than in magnitude minus one. Then this box would be the limiting factor of my gain. Do you see that? 
you have to check and see, am I going through minus one before I leave the unit circle outside quadrants one and two, or one and four? Or do I leave with the gain outside one and four before I go through minus one? That's what you're checking for stability. Is that clear? I want to just keep going, but I know you guys all want to leave and go play with RL Tool. So I will let you leave and we'll stop there and we'll start with Unit 8 next time, which is State Space Controller Design. And we'll pick up at that point.